The last null drops dead from blood loss. Covered in blood, Anya hisses and charges Jean to bite him. Korgrok and Philibert restrain her. Jemnies hides behind a stalagmite, since she is under the illusion that she is naked. Anya no. I must convert you into my minions. Korgrok no. You can't convert us because we will fight you. But if you help us fight Nolls, you can bite them. Anya considers this. Finding no better alternative, she agrees. I'll work with you, for now. A few moments later, she yells and tries to hide with Jemnies. She just realized that she also thinks she is naked. The party attempts and fails to convince Jemnies and Anya that they aren't naked. The party does the next best thing and convinces them that everyone else is under the illusion that they are clothed, or something similar. It's ridiculous, but good enough to progress. The PCS explore the path to the left. They come to a collapsed mine shaft, with a pickaxe and miner's hat lying on the ground. Korgrok puts on the miner's hat and lights a candle. Korgrok we're miners. Torin no, only Anya's a miner. Jean Fassipens. Korgrok takes the pickaxe and almost takes a swing at the wall before noticing the boulder trap. The DM does not get a say rocks fall, everyone dies. The PCS explore the path on the right. They come to a fork. Minicut tracks descends from left to right. They go right. They come to a gap in the floor. 20 feet away, there is a wooden door on the wall, with several pulleys above it. Korgrok drops a rock into the pit and guesses it is 50 feet deep. Anya I'm just going to fly over this gap. Korgrok I think you have to turn into a bat first. Anya, I'm only 12. I don't know how to do that yet. I'm still learning to be a vampire. The party follows the minecart tracks to the surface. The party emerges from a different mine entrance. They notice a middle-aged man in church garb sitting next to an abandoned minecart while he tends to a fire. When they approach, the man draws his sword in surprise and demands who they are. Jemnies and Jean manage decent enough diplomacy checks to calm him, despite the appearance of some of the party members. Anya hisses at him and shields her eyes from the light. Victor Piers introduces himself as a fallen paladin. He states that Pella has abandoned him, so one does the wilderness find repentance, or at least solace. Korgrok asks him if he can cure Anya of her condition. Victor states that yes, but the only cure for vampirism is being pierced through the heart. Victor this surely must be a sign from above, to meet here. It is now clear that the only way to redeem myself is to free this vampiric child from her curse. Anya shoots at Victor, d10,000 random result. Nearest forest burns to the ground within 24 hours. More observant members of the party notices some wisps of smoke in the distance. Philibert shoots at Victor, d10,000 random result. Target's skeleton glows through his skin. Before anyone else can hit him, Victor stabs Anya multiple times through the chest with his long sword. No damage whatsoever. Victor save me Pella, what spawn of evil is this? Victor lets go of his sword and runs off in terror. Anya stares at the sword in her chest in disbelief. She pulls the sword out and stabs herself repeatedly, to no effect. Anya I'm invulnerable to harm. This bodes well. Party not so sure on the whole vampire issue now. There is significantly more smoke on the horizon than before. The party decides to go back into the mines and search for some secret switch to open the door they saw down below. Roll on random encounters. Jean finds a small entrance into a room filled with null skeletons and a black pudding. The party decides to take on the black pudding, firing and retreating up the mine shaft. Multiple d10,000 random result as they fire. A sign appears above the hole, reading the Zeus has been blacklisted by the merchant guild of Otha. Jemnies can no longer hear her own voice. A random male nearby gains one strength permanently. Korgrok feels stronger. Jean can no longer speak when underground. The ooze spawns a phylactery out of a egg, which it promptly dissolves. The contents of Anya's water skin are replaced with dust of sneezing and choking. The ooze can age 100 years at will. The next fire that Philibert creates will match his personality. The DM tells Jean to let the DM immediately know if he ever reaches half health. Jean becomes nervous about the implications of this statement. Anyone wearing armor only Korgrok is knocked on their back. He was firing at the time, so he believes the wand has intense recoil. The nearest druid believes that he or she is a robot. The party reluctantly retreats from the pudding, but only after the DM asks if they are really sure they want to stay here. You know, in that kind of urgent tone that hints the DM doesn't want you to die, but there's not much of a choice you do the clearly bad thing he's warning about. Upon exiting the mines again, everyone notices that it is getting rather hot and smoky. There is a visible fire in the distance. Jean the hunter rolls a natural 20 on nature. 
he tells the group about how dangerous forest fires are and that they need to get out of there now. Rather than getting stuck between a forest fire and a river of sharks, they eventually track down Rolfer the horse, load up the wagon and ride back towards the road towards Oritha. When players arrive at Oritha, they notice an angry mob gathered in the marketplace. Victor Pierce stands on a scaffold, a noose around his neck. His skeleton is still glowing through his skin. Philibert inquires what is happening. A villager tells him that they found the guy that caused all the sharks in the river in the forest fire and that they are going to hang him. Victor shouts out that they should hang him, for Pella has forsaken him and there is nothing left for him in this world. They go to the river hoping to cross, but they find the inverted house hastily abandoned. All the boats have departed, hoping to avoid the forest fire. They spend a night sleeping at the chip mug. Anya and Gemini's dream of murderous snowmen. After 24 hours, the fire has extinguished and the forest is completely gone. The party wants to turn in their nollias for loot, but they need to go to big church to do it. They consider using the teleport wand to get there, but they are worried that Philibert will be caught and imprisoned by the mayor if they do it. Eventually they head down river, trying to find a boat or some other way to cross. They travel for a day south through the charred landscape. They don't find any transportation across the river. Anya tries to drink from her canteen and nearly chokes on dust. No one remembered to buy rations again. Since the forest and all of the animals have burned to ash, they decide to shoot river sharks for food. Multiple d10,000 random result as they fire. Philibert cannot stand for the next 4 hours. Fortunately he was standing waist deep in the river at the time, so he begins drowning. Korgrok has a desire to walk on his hands. He tries to demonstrate to Philibert how to stand and falls over repeatedly. The shark cannot count any numbers greater than 20. The shark knows exactly what time it is. The shark is obsessed with symbols of death. Philibert shoots at Jean for not using any wands, then blames it on the wand for firing at the wrong target. The nearest freshwater lake turns to salt water. Tower Tower is screwed. Korgrok has hallucinations in the presence of royalty. The DM passes a note to Anya asking if her orphan is the child of elvish royalty. She says yes. Korgrok immediately begins tripping balls. Anya believes her allies Jean and Gemini's are dead. She screams in sadness, until they continue talking and moving then she thinks she has succeeded converting them to undead. Apparently feeling left out, the deck of many things plops on the ground in front of Philibert. He picks up the deck. Gemini's ears fall off. Everyone panics. They quickly find out that the ears are still functional, just not attached to her head anymore. They manage to kill the shark before it eats Philibert. No amount of treasure is going to be able to pay for our therapy after we are done with these ones. The party makes camp on the beach. Jean cooks shark for dinner. Korgrok I'm bored. You still got that deck of cards? Philibert pulls out the deck of many things. Anya draws a card from the deck of many things. It is the dungeon card. A powerful entity shows up to imprison the person who drew this card. Five mounted knights and King Rogbert suddenly appear out of the wastes. One of the knights points at Anya and shouts which. We must imprison her. They easily grapple her and start galloping away. The party starts shooting at the horses. Because the knights are too well armored and removing the horses will slow them down. Philibert is encased in a dirt wall one foot thick and three feet tall. By the time the first horse dies, it has rabbit ears, no mouth, and is disgorging a pile of 838 teeth. The knight holding Anya gets pinned by his dead horse and a tooth avalanche. Anya takes some damage from the fall. Another knight comes to grab Anya. Anya tosses the contents of her canteen at the second knight trying to kidnap her. Dust of sneezing and choking covers a 20 foot area, which includes Anya. Both Anya and the knight fail fortitude saves. Anya is knocked unconscious and the knight is disabled by choking. Jean names for the horse of the third approaching knight. D10,000 random result. The caster's shadow rises up and attempts to strangle him. Jean struggles to fight off his own murderous shadow. Philibert shoots for another horse. D10,000 random result. Philibert's pockets fill with blood. Ah. Not again. Torin shoots. D10,000 random result. The nearest well begins disgorging lightning whenever someone attempts to get water. Jemmy shoots, d10,000 random result. The nearest door becomes a gateway to another material plane. King Rogbert calls out to the party to stop this nonsense and allow him to imprison the child for the good of the kingdom. Korgrok and Jean put down their wands, not wanting to kill the king. Philibert is completely ready to commit regicide and shoots again. d10,000 random result. Everyone nearby pledges fealty to the nearest nymph. 
All hail the nearest nymph shouts King Rogbert. All hail the nearest nymph shout the players. The battle immediately concludes, all parties agreeing that it is in their best interests to find and glorify this nymph rather than fight each other. Everyone is cheering, players are hugging one another. Jean's shadow even uses sign language to communicate that he is a big nymph supporter. King Rockbird temporarily jails Anya in Philibert's dirt wall, to fulfill the requirements of the dungeon card. Since the fire has killed everything on this side of the river, the party concludes that the nymph must be on the other side of the water. Anya uses the big church teleportation wand. Suddenly everyone is in the church of Pella again, across the river. Mayor Clark Clifton stands up and immediately points at Philibert in outrage. You, Philibert points at King Rogbert. Clark Clifton falls on his knees in front of his king. The rest of the congregation follows suit. While people are averting their gaze, Anya steals the silver candlesticks that the priest bought to replace the golden candlesticks she previously stole. Epilogue. Several villagers near Otha are electrocuted when they try to get water from their well. A significant portion of Ohir burns in the forest fire. Tower Tower now lacks fresh water. King Rogbert swiftly returns to Castlefoot, presumably to force all of his subjects to pledge their eternal loyalty to the nymph. The Nolliers were turned into the Sheriff of Big Church for 2000 gold pieces. The party uses the money to buy mounts and rations finally. Korgrok proposes using the rabbit ears want to grow new ears for Gemnies, but no one knows if it will make her grow new ears or simply turn her detached ears into rabbit ears. This becomes a moot point as Gemnies ears grow back in 4 days. She now has two sets of working ears, one of them detached. Anya sleeps in the cemetery next to the church and skulks around the town biting people. Korgrok finally stops hallucinating once he is away from King Rogbert and Anya. If you haven't already check out my Redbubble portfolio, you might just find something you like. Just stop! Just stop it! Stop! No! Just stop it! It's time to stop! It's time to stop, okay? No more! Where the fuck are your parents? Who are your parents? I'm gonna call Child Protective Services. It's time to stop!